Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Zed. Today, we're going to be talking once more about support.com. The ticker goes as SPRT, and in this one, we're going to go ahead with a bit of technical analysis, institutional buyers, and a bit of due diligence. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. Now, the last time we did talk about this one, saying and mentioning that this one will probably and most likely will see a jump in stock prices. Now, one of the things we definitely did not anticipate is it breaking above the $60 level. That was a massive jump. And we want to discuss a little bit onto what happened next. That's that really broke the 52 weeks a level and it really skyrocketed above there as well. The last 52 week uh, when we last spoke was around 1534. I said probably around $20 and went to 60. So that's a really good surprise. I'm not upset about that. It's actually really good. And I do hope a lot of you made a lot of money out of this. Now, coming into the question to what happened on Friday, we saw it jump all the way to 60 bucks and drop to 26.33. And there's a lot of conspicuous things that actually happened relating towards that. First off, is the short flow. That's around 41%. This is a lot higher, actually one of the highest short floats in the current market as we currently speak. Now, I do want to anticipate, take a look into this and anticipate whether uh, it's going to increase or decrease. And one of the actual indicators that you like to use is the short volume. It's a little bit different, but it gives you an indication of basically the short selling out of the total volume. And currently that is on Friday around 49.45%. So just about exactly half of all volume transactions happening on Friday were going to the short side. It explained a lot. But at the same time, this is a massive tug of war, and I'm going to explain in a second. You get to see previously as well, around half seems to be about just right. This stock is one of the highest shorted stocks in terms of short volumes, and currently in terms of short float as well. So what's going to happen? Is it going to be a short squeeze? Well, first off, let's remind ourselves of what's coming in next in terms of the next uh, PR. So they have Green Edge uh, merger, and I did talk about that in my last video. And basically, currently, support.com is a leader in customer and technical support solutions delivered by home-based employees. Today, announce an update on that merger. So the current merger will be voted on on September 10th, 2021, with the voting or record being on July 26, 2021. So that's the holder's record. If you don't have shares before then, you probably won't get the vote. But anyway, September 10th, 2021 at a.m. Pacific time, you'll be able to know the results most likely, if not in the next few days after that usually happens is that the merger and the ticker and everything gets through a week after that date sometimes as soon as a couple of days after and i did talk exactly about the details of what's going to happen with this merger in my last video so if you would like to watch that one make sure to find it in my description below also make sure to drop subscribe and leave notification buttons for this channel on the bottom right corner and don't forget to drop a like to this video you can join our discord in the description below but basically, this company here is going to be swallowed up by Green Edge in, in basically in short. And support.com will continue its operations nonetheless, but it's going to be more of a new company. And that's the reason why it's actually jumping up. If you were to look, take a look in terms of their earnings that was actually put up on August 13th, I'm sure you can read and pause the screen, but you get to see that there's numbers such as three cents per share that was in the second quarter of 2021 compared to uh, three cents per share profit in the last year quarter uh, to 2020. But anyway, we're able to see that this is a massive news coming up. Mainly the main thing here is the tug of war between retail going on a retail perhaps on um, imagine most retailers on the longer side there's some massive hate towards short selling on the short side um, and you're able to see or on the retail side my bad you're able to see that that short volumes is continuously increasing really priming itself or even if these this short flow is not true it will prime itself for a short squeeze again so we got to keep that in mind because this one appeared to be have or appears to be have dropping uh because of short selling or high short flow based on the information we have so that's based on speculations based information we have and that is massive because if retail does get to see this video uh, for a big bigger part of it it might actually go ahead and uh, spark a continuation of a short squeeze or at least a stabilization in price above the 30 or 35 dollar you know a quick disclaimer i don't have any position in this one um just because currently i'm not in a position where i can day trade the stock but it's still significantly uh, important to consider that short float and the possibility for another short squeeze or at least a uh, buying action that would attempt to trigger a short squeeze but instead would just 
bring in a bullish action in terms of stock prices. Currently, in terms of um, institutional buyers, the last one here is Blackstone, where they took around 6,500 shares in the short side. So that is something quite interesting from my own perspective. And if we were to take a look into the borrow rate, this one seems to be no current borrow rate and around zero shorts available for shorting, which means uh, it's very likely that all the shorts or all the shares available for short selling is already sold and any shares being sold to the short selling side or through the short selling side might actually be naked short selling at this point, which might be illegal. Um, that's based on speculations, but currently there is zero short shares available it's highly saturated in the maximum amount of short selling that could happen currently as we speak so that again is massive institution or insiders my bad doesn't have any new information so make sure to watch my last video and let's jump right towards technical analysis now from a technical analysis perspective we're going to take a look into a few things so first off everything is going to be looking very bullish that is understanding now basically the 80x is above 50 that is where you need to start worrying because reversals are very easy at this level all the moving averages are bullish now 10 sma is above the 30 ma 50 sma is above 200 sma might sound like voodoo for you right there but just understand that these are moving average days that look to be bullish because of a bullish action that went parabolic now, in terms of the MACD and momentum, they're incredibly bullish. The only thing that is indicating a pullback is a bit of the willing percent R and it's currently a neutral. The willing percent R is similar to the relative strength index and it shows that currently it's a tug of war, literally in the middle between buyers and sellers, short selling and selling and blongs and buyers and covering and it's kind of a middle of a tug war that can snap in either direction in any given moment. So it's a really important thing to recognize. Currently, stochastic fast and stochastic slow does appear to be going a little bit down, warning you that there might be a next level of support that it might be testing. Currently, stochastic fast does show you that, but the moving average bands and Bollinger bands aren't showing you much other than the top of the Bollinger band is 19.58 and the bottom is 17 cents, and it's changing daily. So it's not really uh, very much on high confidence. In terms of Fibonacci retracements, based on the last month for a one hour perspective, the current support is at 26.39. So this one was tested later on, I think right before closing and in the after hours. And you're able to see that that is very strong support at the 26.39. Below there, 18.53 and below there, 5.82. Resistances, 32.75, 39.11, 48.16 and 59.69. Now, in terms of price line action, we're able to see that the current level of support 2796 is very important. Following that 2621, 2386, 1994, going down to 1506 and then 1096, going down to around 878 and 595. Now, or 695, my bad. In terms of resistances, we're able to see 3814 is the next resistance, 3153 going upwards to 3484, and then 4199 going up to 4731, and then up to 5236, and up to finally 5576. Now, it comes to the question to Ed, what do you think is going to happen at this level? Now, this is uh, basically still above the 52 week level from last week. And I do anticipate that this is a massive tug of war and if the information relating towards short floats and short volumes are taken out towards retail, this might actually go ahead and try to harm the short sellers in the game just to try to squeeze them out, out of spite. And that has happened a lot. Now, what's most likely going to happen is it's going to stabilize a little and probably drop down to around the $25 level and stay there a little. And what I've seen happen is and then later on in a couple of days, it would either shoot up or shoot down. And the way you can actually find out is based on the volumes itself or volumes dying down. If they are, usually the stock price would be dropping down because there's less interest. If they are sque if they're squeezing, probably involved, the volumes would increase. The currently, this massive short squeeze or sorry, this massive short volume jump is mainly relating towards short selling, really dropping this one into a bit, um, probably I think $60. Now, it's not only short selling. I'm not trying to blame that on the way, um, but I'm also understanding that there is people who are cashing out from trading or investing who probably bought a $3 and saw it at 60 and said, hey, you know what? I can just cash out and get a new car or something. And that could be very much off the case. 
but in terms of the short float currently it's very high and retail can easily smell that again but again a reason why it jumped to 60 dollars was because of high short selling activity to start with so it's definitely a massive tug of war and it would be very interesting to watch what do you think about this sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day just be very careful with this one and make sure to think about with yourself whether it's worth it to keep it or not and keep a tight stop loss have a good day now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day